Hello students, welcome to lecture 4 of atomic structure. Our topic is drawbacks of Rutherford model. In previous lecture, we discussed about Rutherford model of atom. In that Rutherford model, nucleus present in the center of the atom and around that nucleus, the electrons are revolved in a circular path. Now, our topic is drawbacks of Rutherford model. Rutherford model is like a solar system. We know that in solar system, the planets are revolving around the sun. Like that, the electrons are revolved around the nucleus. So, Rutherford model is like a solar system. Nucleus playing a role of sun and electrons playing a role of planets. In the center of atom there is a nucleus and around that nucleus electrons are revolving and there is a coulombic force K Q1 Q2 by arc square between the electrons and nucleus it is similar to that of gravity force that gravity force is g into m1 m2 by r square so here q1 q2 are charges q1 q2 are charges and r is the distance the distance of separation of charges and k is the proportionality constant and in this gravity force m1 m2 are masses and r is the distance of separation of the masses and g is the gravitational constant and while electrons revolving around the nucleus in a circular path they should lose energy and fall into the nucleus then atom should be collapsed but it is not happening and he did not explain it while electrons revolving around the nucleus so this is the nucleus and this is the orbit while electrons revolving around the nucleus in a circular path they should lose the energy and fall into the nucleus then atom should be collapsed but it not happening and he did not give any explanation for it and Rutherford did not explain the stability of atom stability of atom and Rutherford did not explain how electrons are distributed around the nucleus so he did not explain how that electrons are distributed around the nucleus so these are the drawbacks of Rutherford model Rutherford model like a solar system and a nucleus playing a role of sun and electrons playing a role of planets and there is a columbic force k q1 q2 by r square between the electrons and nucleus and it is similar to that of 
gravity force the gravity force g into m1 m2 by r square so here q1 q2 are charges and m1 m2 are the masses and r is the distance of separation of charges and here r is the distance of separation of masses and here k is the proportionality constant and g is the gravitational constant and while electron revolve around the nucleus in a circular path they should lose the energy and fall into the nucleus then atom should be collapsed but it not happening and he did not give any explanation for it and rutherford did not explain the stability of atom and rutherford did not explain how that electrons are distributed around the nucleus let me draw that stable and unstable atoms so this is the nucleus and this is the orbit in that orbit electrons are revolving so this is the stable atom and this is the nucleus and electrons revolve around the nucleus and they can lose the energy and fall into the nucleus and it is a unstable atom so these are the drawbacks of rutherford model next one development of rutherford model leads to the bohr's model niels bohr improve the rutherford model improve the rutherford model two developments played a major role in the bohr's model of atom these are number 1 dual character of electromagnetic radiation dual character of electro magnetic radiation these electromagnetic radiations possess both the natures particle nature and wave nature next one atomic spectra explained only by assuming quantized electronic energy levels in the atoms quantized electronic energy levels in the atoms so these two are played a major role in the bohr's model of the atom so two formulations are there in the niels bohr's model number 1 dual character of electromagnetic radiation the dual characters are particle nature and wave nature and number 2 atomic spectra quantized electronic energy levels so in that first one two characters are there particle nature and wave nature let us discuss that wave nature of electromagnetic radiation the james maxwell in 1870 observed that when oscillating electrically charged particles moves under the acceleration then 
alternating oscillating electrical and magnetic fields are produced so two fields are produced here one is the electrical field and the second one is magnetic field and these two fields are perpendicular to each other and also these fields are perpendicular to direction of propagation of the wave so these two are perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to propagation of the wave propagation of the wave and let me draw that diagram so this is the diagram which shows the magnetic field and electric field so here in this diagram we are taking uh, three directions one is the x axis and another one is y axis and the third one is z axis let me make it simple so here what is a z axis and this one is x axis and this is the y axis so these three axes are perpendicular to each other so when oscillating electrically charged particle moves under acceleration then alternating oscillating electric field and magnetic fields are produced already we studied that and they are perpendicular to each other see here this blue color shows the magnetic field which is on y axis and this red color shows electric field which is on z axis already i showed that so this is the z axis and this is the y axis on y axis the magnetic field will be produced and on z axis the electric field will be produced and these two fields are perpendicular to each other and these two are also perpendicular to direction of the propagation of the wave so here this is the x axis and this is the direction of the wave and that magnetic field is on y axis and electric field is on z axis so these two are also perpendicular to direction of the propagation of the wave and these fields are transmitted in the form of the waves called electromagnetic waves electro magnetic waves or they are called electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic radiations and electromagnetic waves are unlike sound waves unlike sound waves or unlike water waves because the sound waves and water waves require the medium but here in this electromagnetic waves do not require any medium they can move in vacuum also and there are many types of electromagnetic radiations or electromagnetic waves with different wavelengths and frequency the arrangement of different spectral lines in the increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency is called electro magnetic spectrum the arrangement of 
different spectral lines in the increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency called electromagnetic spectrum let me draw that electromagnetic spectrum so this is the electromagnetic spectrum there are many types of electromagnetic radiations or waves with the different wavelengths and frequency so these are the electromagnetic radiations and electromagnetic waves gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays infrared rays microwaves radio waves and long radio waves this is the decreasing order of frequency mu in hertz 10 to the power of 24 10 to the power of 22 and up to 10 to the power of 0 so this is the decreasing order of frequency in hertz and this is the increasing order of wavelength lambda in meters see here 10 to the power of minus 16 10 to the power of minus 14 10 to the power of minus 12 and up to we are taken 10 to the power of 8 so this is the increasing order of wavelength in meter here the gamma rays range 10 to the power of 19 and above this is the frequency in hedges and wavelength is 10 to the power of minus 11 and below in meters and after that gamma rays there is a x rays the x rays the frequency range is 10 to the power of 19 to 10 to the power of 17 and wavelength lambda is 10 to the power of minus 11 to 10 to the power of minus 9 and after that x rays we have uv rays ultraviolet rays so the range is the frequency 10 to the power of 17 to 10 to the power of 15 and wavelength is 10 to the power of minus 9 to 10 to the power of minus 7 and after that uv we have ir infrared rays the range is frequency 10 to the power of 15 to 10 to the power of 11 and wavelength range is 10 to the power of minus 5 to 10 to the power of minus 3 after that ir we have microwaves the range is frequency 10 to the power of 11 to 10 to the power of 9 and wavelength is 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of 1 and after that radio waves the radio waves frequency range 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the power of 5 and wavelength range is 10 to the power of 1 to 10 to the power of 3 and after that radio waves we have long radio waves the range is frequency 10 to the power of 5 to and below of that 10 to the power of 5 and the wavelength is from 10 to the power of 3 to and above so these are the types of the electromagnetic radiations or waves with the different wavelength and frequencies so the arrangement of different spectral lines in the increasing order of wavelength and decreasing order of frequency increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency called electromagnetic spectrum and here in this also we have visible spectrum so the visible spectrum range between 
400 to 750 nanometers of the wavelength so the wavelength is between the 400 to 750 nanometers in this range we can see that colors that colors are vibgr v means violet i means indigo and b is the blue and g is the green and y is the yellow o is the orange and r is the red so these colors we can see in the visible spectrum so this is about wave nature of electromagnetic radiation next some important terms and definitions first one wavelength the wavelength is represented by lambda and the definition for that wavelength is the distance between two neighboring crusts two neighboring crusts or two neighboring troughs of the wave called wavelength the distance between the two neighboring crusts or two neighboring troughs of the wave is called wavelength let me draw that wave so this is the wave it is the upward and this is the downward and next upward and downward so this is the wave and here in this wave the definition for wavelength is two neighboring crests so this upward is called crest and downward is called trough so these two are the two neighboring crusts so the distance between two neighboring crusts is called wavelength or the distance between the two neighboring troughs so this one is the trough and this also trough so the distance between these two troughs is called wavelength and this wavelength is represented by lambda so the distance between the two neighboring crusts or the distance between the two neighboring troughs in a wave is called wavelength and that wavelength units are centimeter meter nanometer angstroms picometer so these are the units of our wavelength and for that wavelength the formula is lambda is equal to c by mu so this is the formula for wavelength lambda is equal to c by mu and here one angstrom is equal to 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeters and is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 meters and 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus 7 centimeter or 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus 9 meters and 1 picometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 centimeters or 1 picometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus 12 meters so the formula for wavelength is lambda is equal to c by mu c is the velocity and mu is the frequency and next one frequency that frequency is represented by mu so the definition for frequency is the number of waves 
across a particular point in one second called frequency here I am taking one particular point and in this direction the wave is travel so here so many number of waves travel in this direction and I consider one point so here the number of waves cross a particular point in one second is called frequency and the formula for frequency mu is equal to c by lambda and here the units for frequency are heads or per second or per second or CPS cycle per second and frequency is inversely proportional to its wavelength so here this is the frequency and this one is the wavelength so that frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength so mu is inversely proportional to lambda so this is about frequency next one velocity it is represented by c and the definition for velocity the distance traveled by the wave in one second is called velocity let me take one distance from here to here this is the distance so this this distance travel by wave in one second so this distance is represented by lambda and this distance travel by wave in one second so the wave travel from here to here in one second then it is called velocity so the distance traveled by the wave in one second is called velocity and formula for that velocity c is equal to mu lambda and the velocity of all electromagnetic radiations in the space or in vacuum is the same in the space or in vacuum is same and it is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeter per second or 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so the distance traveled by wave in one second is called velocity that velocity represented by c and the formula for that velocity c is equal to mu lambda and the velocity of all electromagnetic radiations in space or in vacuum is the same and it is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeter per second or 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and here the velocity units centimeter per second or meter per second so these are the units for velocity and next one wave number that wave number represented by mu bar and the definition for wave number the number of waves present in one unit length is called wave number so let me take one unit here so this is one unit length in this one unit length there are so many number of waves so the number of waves present in one unit length is called wave number and 
reciprocal of wavelength is called wave number so the formula for wave number mu bar is equal to 1 by lambda so here the wave number is a reciprocal of wavelength means that wave number is inversely proportional to wavelength and the units for this wave number units per centimeter or per meter next one amplitude the height of the crust or depth of the trough of a wave called amplitude the height of the crust or depth of the trough of a wave called amplitude so let me draw one wave so this is the height and this is the depth means it is a crust and it is a trough so the height of the crust or depth of the trough is called amplitude and amplitude determines the intensity intensity or brightness of the light So the height of the crust or depth of the trough of a wave is called amplitude and amplitude determines the intensity or brightness of the light. So this is the amplitude. So these are the important terms and definitions.